Hello, everybody. Are you ready for the second presentation of the evening? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> OK. Uh, I would say let's kick off. So hello, my name is Rafael Lewandowski, and today I'll tell you, tell you about um, GitOps, and uh, I will show you uh, how you can use this and uh, show you some concrete examples with uh, a setup of Flux and Kubernetes. A few words about me. I'm a software engineer with over seven years of experience, uh, mostly Java, some Node.js recently, and I'm doing more and more ops uh, as the time passes. Agenda for today. Uh, first, I'll say a few words about how people used to do web operations, uh, then move to DevOps, and how this aims to solve those problems. Then, the main topic of the presentation, GitOps, followed by examples of uh, Flux and uh, Kubernetes, and uh, of course, there will be a summary in the end. Web operations in perspective. This usually meant that uh, you need to have your own uh, server room, employ people to handle all the hardware. You had to plan well ahead uh, to buy enough hardware to be able to scale your application up if there was a need for that. You had to have special rules for accessing server rooms uh, uh, to other security me measures such as uh, fire and so on. It uh, was really adding a lot of extra work to normal operations. Um, this also, uh, also uh, was accompanied by the fact that operating applications involved a lot of manual tinkering, so people would log into boxes and configure applications or deploy applications themselves, and it's really easy to be a little too hasty and delete the file system. Or uh, on one of my previous projects, a guy deleted a bin folder, and that was enough to make the VM unusable. So. Yeah, you should be you should be careful when you SSH somewhere where a product production stuff is running. Companies usually have a separate operations team and a separate development team. And unfortunately they don't talk to each other too much. So developers want to deliver features, they want to deploy as often as possible. And on the other hand, you have ops which want to keep the application running, and they know that deployments and reconfigurations is a risk. So, they, so these are quite separ separate uh, set of goals, whereas the ultimate goal of the company should be to deliver features to your users. Luckily, we have DevOps, which is uh, uh, quite a loud buzzbo buzzword uh, over the past few years, which tries to address these, uh, these matters. So the elements of DevOps, uh, it means uh, increased collaboration. So operations and development teams work really closely together and the, uh, in an ideal world, uh, you have the same people who are both writing the applications and operating the applications. Uh, it means uh, automating as much as possible to uh, reduce the need for manual human input when uh, operating apps. Infrastructure as code uh, helps with achieving that goal as well. Uh, I'll tell you more about it as uh, as we uh, as we continue. And uh, yeah, configuration management. So providing configuration to apps as a service where you can uh, clearly see what goes where, uh, define access rules so that uh, variables are not mixed up between environments, and you uh, invest more in monitoring so that you have a clear visible state of your app and you don't need to log into some boxes to see what's happening. All these translate uh, to the fact that you are faster uh, than your competition and your users are happier. You can deliver uh, quicker, cheaper, and if something goes wrong, uh, you are better off uh, with uh, fixing problems. And what I always like to uh, note, uh, Taking uh, into account what I just said, DevOps is a cultural change and not just a new job position which you can apply for. Moving on to the main topic, uh, GitOps. So what is it? Uh, GitOps is an operating model where uh, you not only define your 
infrastructure as code, but you also make deployments and changes to your infrastructure as code by making commits, by submitting pull requests uh, that people can review and approve. Let's see, let's see so how such workflow can look in practice. So you are a software engineer that wants to deliver a new feature to your application which is running somewhere on somebody else's computer that is uh, the cloud. So how do you go about that? You can implement the feature, commit it, build an artifact and copy it over to the server, put in a correct location and restart the service. But this is what I just described. It uh, brings with itself all the, all the things that cause problems. So we don't want to be doing that. We can do better. Let's see how we, uh, how we can improve. Uh, it's uh, almost uh, uh, it's ubiquitous to have a continuous integration on the or a continuous delivery server uh, when developing your application. So once you submit a change, uh, the server will pick up that there is something new there. It will pull the changes, execute any automatic tests that you've written for it, execute any quality checks, and then build the artifact. This artifact is then published to an artifact repository. And once it's there, there can be it can be the same delivery pipeline or it can be a separate delivery pipeline that uh, sees that there is a new artifact available and it will make a deployment to your to your infra. There is a problem with that. Uh, this causes the build pipeline and uh, the deployment, uh, the application deployments to be coupled. You need to give the pipeline access to your infrastructure and uh, you want uh, to have as few people and as few processes accessing your app for security reasons. Also, what happens if uh, you want to apply some configuration changes to your app? Uh, you can log into the cloud dashboard and modify something there. You can use automated scripting tools that uh, do it for you. But then again, you need to uh, access your, your infrastructure externally. And this uh, can cause uh, security problems. And if you make a typo somewhere, for example, can uh, cause incorrect configuration to, to easily get in uh, into your app. Additionally, additionally one point uh, to mention here is that the, the pipeline which you see at the top, uh, often it, w it is the only thing that the developer interacts with. So they uh, implement something, artifact is built, and then they forget about this stuff. There is some separate ops team that will handle the deployment for me. So let's, let's try to do the GitOps approach and improve here. With GitOps, we uh, obviously need uh, to version our, define our infrastructure in code and version it in a code repository. Another element we need is a GitOps operator. GitOps operator is a process that lives inside your infra and it, it will pull the artifacts repo for new versions. And once it sees a new version, it will not do a deployment straight into your app, it will instead update the definition of your infra in the code repository. Then you have a separate polling loop that uh, checks for changes to the infra. And once it sees that there is something new there, you have a new version available, or for example, you want to scale your application up, it will make the, make the infrastructure update itself. In it's Kubernetes, uh, we can use declarative uh, configurations, and Kubernetes cluster will uh, do its best to uh, transit to the desired state you want it to be, you want it to be in. And that also means that uh, there is no external process accessing uh, your infra. Instead, the infra will pull the artifacts itself. And uh, since you are more involved into the process of operating your app, making any changes is as easy as uh, submitting a pull request with all the, all the benefits of, uh, of that. So your colleagues can catch any, any typos, any errors, uh, do the regular review, and the, also the knowledge is shared across the company. 
And once you once you merge any changes in, the uh, polling loop will kick in again and update your infra to the desired state. Uh, how does this fit into the previous concept I just talked about, DevOps? Uh, this is a uh, high emphasis both of on automation and uh, infrastructure as code. So you have a, you have a clear separation. Uh, the build process uh, is uh, separate fr fr from your infra. You operate it uh, on a separate code repository, on a separate process. It's all automated and uh, you have a very clear view of what's inside uh, your app, how many replicas you have, which version is running. You can just check the code repository. And if, for example, you want to roll back, you can just revert a commit or uh, push push a new change that uh, overrides uh, overrides the ones uh, which you've <coughs> committed uh, just a moment ago. Okay, let's uh, let's move to some uh, some action. Flux, uh, as you may have guessed by now, is the is the GitOps operator, and. Uh, if I were to tell you what it really is, Flux is just another container that runs on a pod inside your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so it's uh, no different from any other app uh, you, may be, you may be running on it. The difference is that you need to give it extra permissions. Since it's an operator, uh, it has to have permis permissions to the cluster API so that it can uh, transition between cluster states. Um, I don't. I don't think it's uh, too hard to set up, uh, and I'll show you the steps uh, that I had to take in order to uh, configure my Kubernetes cluster to to use Flux. So the first step is that we obviously need a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, David uh, talked uh, about that just uh, a moment ago. We can click uh, click one uh, in the in the cloud provider dashboard. However, I'm really fond of the idea of having infrastructure as code, so I played around with Terraform a little bit. Uh, Terraform is a um, syst system which allows you to define your cloud infra in code and apply it to, to your uh, cloud account. Uh, here, I used it to create a new Kubernetes cluster on, on Google Cloud Platform. First, I had to make a plan. It plans to create one new resource, which is the uh, Kubernetes, and uh, it will, yeah, it's, it says it's creating, and it will apply the change now. It takes a moment, but I s sped the video up. Two, two and a half minutes, and we have a cluster running. And the amount of code that I had to write to achieve this, uh, really, really not that much. Uh, I have a cluster running with uh, free, free nodes operating, just a few lines of code. Next step, uh, you need your app and your infra, which, are you, which you're going to operate with Flux. So to define that, uh, we're going to do the declarative approach, uh, which uh, David mentioned. So in my new cluster, I have the default namespaces, and I created a new one called playground uh, for for my application and I applied a bunch of uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, object definition files to the cluster and it created two two pods of the application it also created a service of type load balancer service that has an external IP and we can we can hit the app this app is uh, really simple. It's, it's just an Nginx server that uh, serves some static content, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it will suffice for the uh, purpose of this presentation. Um, so the code I had to write to define my application, uh, this is the deployment. Uh, not too many lines of code. The interesting bits, uh, the, the label on the deployment, which is later used by the service to connect to it, Flux annotation, which tells Flux to automatically uh, deploy new versions of the app once they are available. Two replicas, that's why you've seen uh, two pods in the video I've just shown you. And uh, 
the application. So the image image name, nginx static, and the and the version that is deployed. Second file, the service of type load balancer that uses a selector to connect to the pods that are uh, that were defined in the deployment. Next step is installing Flux itself. So, uh, as I mentioned, Flux is just another container running uh, running on a pod. So uh, we can use the same approach to to install it. I created a new new namespace called Flux uh, for it to live in, and uh, the, con the 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 configuration. As you can see, there's uh, a little more happening over here, but I didn't have to write all of this myself. There is a very good template provided by Weaveworks, which is a company that implemented uh, Flux, and you can use this template, uh, just adjust it in a, in a few places, and uh, it will install Flux into the cluster for you. Yeah, we have uh, Flux and uh, uh, Memcache, it depends on running uh, in my cluster. Yeah, so this is the Flux deployment. It's a little more beefy, but the interesting, uh, the part that's only interesting for us here uh, is here, where we pointed to the code repository that it should operate and specify the branch. It, it should watch master for changes. Next step, we need to give Flux uh, access to, to our infrastructure repository. It has to be able to commit stuff into it. It's also quite straightforward to do. So when Flux starts up, it generates a key pair and prints out the public key into, into the console. So you can just copy that over and then go to GitHub, to your repository, and add a deployment key. You just need to remember to, to give it right access. And this is, this is all that it is to give uh, Flux access to your repository. So is, is this all that we have to do? Yeah, we have fully functional uh, Flux uh, running in the cluster. So let's, uh, I'll show you now how, uh, how, it, uh, how it works, what it's, what it's actually doing. So this is uh, the repository of my app, Nginx Static. And I have the uh, latest, latest version committed here. Uh, the hash may be a little small, but it's, uh, it starts with 0254. Anyway, after I committed it, a CI server built a Docker image for me and pushed it to Docker Hub automatically. And the image was tagged with uh, the commit hash of the commit it was built of. Then, when Flux uh, noticed that there is a new version available in the in Docker Hub, in the artifacts repository, it automatically committed a new version to my Kubernetes playground, to my infrastructure repository, which looks like this. It's, it's just a commit. The new version 0.25.4 was introduced into the cluster. Uh, okay, I'll sum up now. So what we liked about uh, about Flux. It's really, really easy to set up, as uh, I've uh, just shown you, and it makes operating the Kubernetes cluster very easy. You don't need to uh, tinker with uh, kubectl all the time. You just make commits into your infra repo, and Flux will be doing that on, on your behalf. It makes releases really easy, because you just need to update one spot uh, in your infra repo, and it will be pulled and deployed uh, automatically for you. And uh, yeah, I, I mentioned uh, on one of the code samples that there is an annotation to tell Flux to deploy automatically or not. So if you have an environment that should always be up to date, you set that to true, and it will keep on deploying, uh, deploying whenever there is something new available. If you don't want that to happen, if you want to have control, you just disable it and uh, have full control. You, you specify the version which should be deployed. Um, cons, the default uh, template that we copy over from Weaveworks is very greedy on permissions. Actually, it demands you, uh, you to give it all permissions to your cluster. So if you are deploying to production, uh, it's a good idea to limit it to the absolute minimum that it needs to operate the cluster. Um, the documentation provided by, we by Weaveworks, uh, it's complete but it's scattered across a number of different files and uh, you need to spend a little time figuring out where everything is. 
but it's I assure you it's all there and uh, well yeah this is this is uh, I think the first GitOps out of the box GitOps solution available on the market it's free but it's bound to Kubernetes so if you if you want to use it you you, ne you need to have your app infrastructure app infrastructure running on on Kubernetes um, all the all the code samples which I uh, just shown you are available on my GitHub so if you want to play around feel free to to clone or fork and uh, I also uh, encourage you to check out my medium and that's it thank you <laughs> I will I'll be around during the break but does any anyone have any questions for now hmm? Is it possible to use uh, plugs with Helm? Uh, yes, yes, we it's possible, but uh, we haven't uh, exercised uh, this too much yet because uh, Flux again is very greedy on permissions, and so we wanted to we wanted to deploy to production, and uh, we didn't have enough time to to sort it all out. It's uh, easy to install Flux with Helm. You have installed. Yeah, yeah, it's also documented in WeWork site. Okay, thank you.